Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Glad you could join me. We're going to jump right into this about uh, color wheels and maybe making your own color wheel. Now, I will confess, color wheels don't really help you a whole lot. I, I think they're a good visualization tool for a very rank, rank beginning artist. Um, they don't provide great mixing information because usually uh, the colors around the outside here are so different from what your actual colors might be. I mean, if you really don't know that red and yellow make orange, um, you know, these might be useful. And really in watercolor mixing, it's not that simple. Uh, most people know that a warm red and yellow make a better orange and a cool red and a blue make a better purple. So uh, just simple three color primaries and mixing don't really tell the whole story. And therefore watercolor wheel doesn't help you much in mixing. If you really are wanting to visualize mixing, a matrix works better. What I've always used and relied on watercolor wheels for are getting in the neighborhood with a complement. I think they're useful for that. Complementary mixing or complementary colors, which is the color opposite each other on a color wheel, provides a number of things. You can mix browns, you can mix neutrals, you can know what to avoid with complements. So I've always liked color wheels for that purpose. I have a video which I will link to below that shows how you can take your own colors and put them on a color wheel, not for the purposes of mixing, but for the purposes of determining how they sit on the color wheel to determine complements. And I think that's useful. Now these color wheels here uh, are typical of what you'll find in an art supply store. Uh, these are probably the most common ones. This is by a company called the Color Wheel Company. And this is their standard color wheel. This is their watercolor wheel. The only difference is on the standard one, they, they make the colors a little more intense as if you're dealing with opaque paints. Uh, the watercolor wheel just kind of prints a watercolor texture in there. So it looks like it's on watercolor paper and they only add water. They don't worry about adding white. So uh, they'll include, this particular brand includes a value scale. It's okay. I personally find a value scale isolated by itself in a horizontal strip more beneficial. And these typically will show you what each color will look like when you add red when you add yellow and when you add blue. So taking each color on the color wheel and mixing them with a primary. Also adding white and adding black. Again, for watercolor, I don't find that particularly useful. There are a few other things on here. Uh, color theory terms, each color with a tint, a tone, and a shade. Split complementary, triad, tetrad, all that stuff is. In an academic sense, uh, those terms may interest you in actual fact of painting in real time uh, they don't really help you except except to give a name to what you might already be doing so I don't mean to talk down color wheels necessarily that much but I, I have found them especially for the experienced painter uh, of very limited use however recently you saw my review on the waffle flower stamps and they have this set which you can make your own color wheel and I thought what would be a useful color wheel that I could make so we're going to look at a couple that I thought of I'm going to make them and we'll talk about how you might use them I'm going to use actual arches paper which that's a benefit over these you know commercially printed ones and you can use your own paint which is a second benefit so let's get going I'm going to cut about a five inch strip here off of this paper and I'm actually planning on making two color wheels so let me cut another one I need to have room for the stamp and for the die cut top which has no imprinted element this is just a stamping platform you don't have to get this fancy I did this just because I'm going to be making a lot of swatches and I wanted a repeat stamping platform but you can use a standard acrylic block for these stamps keep in mind you don't have to use the stamps at all you can plot your own color wheel out with a compass on watercolor paper but i've really kind of gotten excited about these stamps the opportunity to use them so i wanted to give them a try
for those of you who are not crafters or stampers and I primarily am not these stamping platforms just help you to get a double impression if you need to do that or do repositionable stamping re repeat stamping and more accurate positioning it's all this is as you can see there and that happens to me a lot because I'm not an experienced crafter so this stamp is not seasoned or broken in so I can get absolute accurate repositioning that's the only reason I'm using one of these okay that's much much better all right so now I'm just going to die cut these now again that would be easy to cut out by hand these little intricate shapes might be a bit of a challenge to cut out those out by hand you could use an exacto knife really that is just makes the windows that rotate on top and that's just an extra convenience you can use a color wheel without any top window but I'm going to go ahead and use this set to its fullest extent and I'm just using a repositionable tape to hold these down this particular die cutter has a magnetic sheet all right looks great so I'm ready to color in my color wheel all right so I've got my color wheel stamped cut out and the tops cut out so my idea for the two color wheels that I wanted to produce are uh, one with neutrals. So I'll do the colors of the color wheel, but then I have three things that I usually use for neutrals, or four actually. Neutral tint, Payne's gray, sepia, and then the complement. And I'm going to have those four ways of neutralizing that color. Payne's gray and the sepia neutralize them on the warm or the cool side. Of course, neutral tint is neutral and complement is a complement. And the very last one will be a tint. Just going to use a silver brush black velvet round, number six. And I'm just going to use my M gram palette. And I'm going to come as close to these colors as I can. And so that'll give me roughly a ballpark. For any other color that I have so it's just one of those guides meant to get you in the neighborhood so to speak and the way I'm gonna mix with all the tents is gonna be a glaze I could mix in the tents the neutral tent Payne's gray CP all that I could mix it in as I went but I think it would be more accurate actually if I paint yellow uh, over the whole thing a solid yellow and then just do a thin glaze of the tent on top And that's how I'm going to do each color. And in this last one, I'm going to have a very, very pale tint with just water. That's as of yellow. I'll do yellow orange next, and this is going to be Indian yellow. And I'm going to probably mix this. As of orange is close, but it needs uh, to be a little redder, so I'm going to mix in a little scarlet pyrrol. And if you want to make a color wheel for yourself, you can have each of these represent a mix with anything you want. From opaque white to black to blue, the standard primary kind of color wheel. I mean, you can make a cu custom color wheel just for a particular type of painting. All the colors in the color wheels m mixed with green, for instance. Or secondary, so you could do a color wheel like this, each color mixed with the three primaries, or each color mixed with three uh, secondaries. So a lot of possibilities. All right, we're going to go to red-orange, and that's pretty much scarlet pyrrol for me, but just a touch of pyrrol red. Maybe not as orange as it should be, I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes it, it'll shift when it's drier. All right, now on to red, and I'm just going to use straight up pyro red for that. Pretty good representation of red. I think I'm going to go the other way now. Yellow green, and I think azo green will be okay with that by itself. I sure love azo green. That is one of my favorite colors. So useful. Oh yeah, it's going to do good. You know, another thing you can do with these color wheels is is uh, 
to do it all pale. Do a whole color wheel, just pale tint. Maybe you want to do some, some painting of florals or something that involves a lot of pastels. Or I don't know. You know, I'm just... I'm just kind of shooting from the hip here, but uh, or maybe you want to do just brand. Maybe you want to do a color wheel all within a particular brand. Maybe just a little bit too too yellow. I'm gonna go over that with a glaze of sap green. Not really a glaze since it's all still wet. So yeah, we'll go with it. Pale tint. Now for straight up green, and probably the best for that's gonna be thalo thalo green, blue shade. I don't know though. That's kind of a blue green. Maybe some sap green mixed in with it. Yeah, that's better. I don't have phthalo green green shade or that would probably be the best. So this is phthalo green and sap green mixed together. Yeah, well, I think that's a good green. It's kind of a Christmas green and that is usually what you find across from red. So I do think this yellow green is still a little too yellow. So I think I'm going to go back in here, very light wash of that same color that I just put down. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Put in this pale wash of green. Alright, so I think blue-green can be a straight up phthalo green. If I need to put a glaze over that, I will. And if you're doing this, you can always uh, wait till you have all the colors in to go back and adjust if you want to, which I very well may do. Don't know, but all right, for true blue or just blue, I think I'm going to use cobalt. Cobalt is a good choice, I think, because it's, it sits pretty much on that end of the scale where it's neither cool, cool blue or a warm blue. It, it probably leans a little warm, but let's just get it down there and see maybe I'll go back in with a little cerulean now as I said at the outset this is not a mixing color wheel last time I did a color wheel I had all kinds of people telling me I was using the wrong colors for the blue the red and the green just reference to get you in the ballpark with compliments with what color lies between what other color well, I may need to adjust that some, but oops, I forgot that in there. But let's get in all of it before I do that. As a complement mixing wheel, I think that's pretty accurate because that's about the right blue for that orange. I may need to blue this up some more. And I think I will. I think I'll use a way to make sure that's dry. Blue violet. I'm going to go to ultramarine for that with a touch of cobalt violet. Well, it's a great exercise of nothing else. You know, and you don't need these these die cut tops uh, to do this exercise. This is just a great exercise. Put colors in a color wheel. You know, the thing is, is when you're painting, you want that color knowledge to flow out of you. You want it to become second nature, and you want it to flow out of you when you're when you're painting. You know, when I'm painting, when I get into a painting. I'm not consulting these. I may consult them before painting, as I'm choosing my color scheme, as I'm thinking about it. I might glance at them, but I'm mixing visually right off my palette. And a lot of these these principles have become ingrained, you know, in second nature. And that's what you're aiming for. So you don't have to think a lot about color when you're going for it. All right, so let's go for violet and I think I'm just going to use quinacridone violet although it's a little bit red I'm going to mix quinacridone red and quinacridone violet and then for the violet I'm going to mix cobalt violet with a little bit of quinac... oh stink forgot about my pale tint well I'm going to wait till that dries and scrub it out just a word about the stamps I let the stamps dry overnight things that sometimes are permanent on regular paper or less so on watercolor paper because of the sizing. I mean, it's still permanent, but it just it usually doesn't dry permanent immediately. Uh, you have the same problem with fountain pens, so I let these stamps dry overnight. I think they were pretty well dry last night, but that's a big jump there. We'll lift some of that, maybe go in with a glaze of red. All right, we're going to do mostly cobalt violet over here, I think. Yeah, I think that hits a and in between pretty well. Now actually, I think I'm going to adjust this red a little. It's a little cooler. And then I'm going to adjust this red violet a little with the same color. It's really just kind of an aquanacridone red. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to let it dry and we'll take another look. 
So this is cool. I like these little embossed lines up here where you can paint in what it is you're applying over that that level of color. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go cool, neutral, warm. So I'm gonna put neutral tint in the middle. I'm just gonna make a, a dark but fairly transparent wash. I'm gonna put Payne's gray over here. Alright, Payne's gray neutral tint and now sepia. I don't use sepia a lot for neutralizing except maybe in some warmer colors since it tends to make colors muddy but uh, sometimes it's right it's, it's appropriate and then this is going to be complement so I'm not going to do anything and then this one will be the small one which is tent so I won't color in those two the question is going to be how dark a glaze of the tent do I want to do I want to make sure the main color shows through so it's going to be a fairly light glaze I need to kind of standardize that a bit so I'm going to start with sepia and sepia is going to be this third ring down I'll start here and just work my way around and in that way I will have the same color wash or glaze if you will on all the colors same intensity sepia I'm going to skip this one and go up to the top one, which is Payne's Gray, while that dries. Alright, we're going to let that dry. And finally, Neutral Tint. And this ring, we're going to do complements all the way around. So I'm going to have to go back off my palette and pick up that complementary color. Thankfully I left most of those colors out there. And again I'm just trying to do a thin glaze where the color up here dominates the mix. Alright so there we go. Payne's Gray, Neutral Tint, Sepia, and complement and then the pastel shade in the middle. Let's put the top on and see how it works. Oh <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. I'm just gonna label them. Let's take a close look. I like it and I think that's going to be far more useful to me anyway than one of these. Now I'm just going to do this one. I think I'm just going to do this one in, in tent outs of the main color. I think that would be useful is just to have a different tent and I may even just ramp that color from here to here. Alright so here's my second color wheel. I think it turned out pretty well. It's just tents nothing else but so you can see all the various color tints by diluting with water and I find these two type of color wheels to be pretty useful I've actually seen this kind go available commercially but it's so much better when you can make one with your own watercolor paper and your own colors alright everyone I hope you enjoyed that I hope that gave you some ideas maybe you could tell me in the comments if you buy these products make these color wheels some ideas you had for making your own color wheel share that with the other viewers thanks everyone appreciate you watching liking and subscribing thank you so much patrons for supporting this channel and making this content possible and we will see everybody in the next video Bye bye